This is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus AEW Dark Elevation. This is the fourth episode. It was a little over an hour and a half long. It was 12 matches, which is right about where I think the show can still remain effective for what they're trying to do. Um, real uh, showcase for different things. Um, that showcase segment with Paul White talking to John Silver. I guess that is going to replace the video vignettes introducing people and telling us their story. Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty good thing to use Paul White in that way. That opening of the show, um, I think, is really effective. I really like it. It separates it from dark. Um, yeah, and we're off to the races. Again, I grade these matches on a three-check system. For the majority of the matches, which would be called enhancement or squash matches, um, three check marks. One, for the proper person being put over in a memorable way. Second check mark, if that person looks really great in the process. And a third check mark, if the person who is losing does a particularly good job or um, is given a large amount of offense by the person that is beating them. For the competitive matches, of which I would call exactly one of these a competitive match, um, the first check mark is for if both parties um, look good. The second check mark if somebody is put over in a definitive fashion that will help their career. And then a third check mark if something um, small or large is advanced that can be used on Dynamite, their main show. First match. Adam Page, which is a great way to start the show against Bill Collier. Um, a great match that really showcases Adam Page sort of respecting the fact that Bill Collier is really big and he didn't want to take away from that. Um, finish looked great with the buckshot lariat. Real meat and potato stuff here, but um, the taller people in AEW, especially the guys who don't win very much, tend to look very gangly and awkward. Um, Cesar Bononi, most amongst them. But Bill Collier actually looks pretty mobile here, and he does have to move around quite a bit. Adam Page is just getting comfortable. Feels like a star, looks like a star. Three check marks. Second match. Dean Alexander and Carly Bravo representing the Nightmare Academy School against the Varsity Blondes. The Varsity Blondes here, um, the chemistry is better. At first, I wrote down, boy, Dean Alexander and Carly Bravo seem to have more enthusiasm than the Varsity Blondes will likely bring, but that wasn't true at all. The Varsity Blondes looking like they have chemistry, not just in terms of their ring work, but actually looking like they're, they are they like being around each other, which is important for this team. Um, Griff, in particular, looked really, really great here. And uh, the Varsity Blondes go over, as you might expect. It's a good match. Three check marks. Um, third, we have not had, by the way, um, an AEW Dark Elevation with three check marks throughout the night. We'll see if we can get one tonight. Britt Baker... Um, with Alex Gracia, this is a great use of this format. Britt Baker cuts the promo where and does this whole silly thing where I'm going to get in referee's position, and you're not sure where it's going. You just know Britt Baker's being an asshole. And then she immediately turns her and puts her in the lockjaw, takes the time to get the glove, and then put the glove on and then make her tap out. It was a great exhibition for Britt Baker. I thought an appropriate use of this format, um, even calling her out for being an enhancement talent and belittling her. Britt Baker definitely holding on. I'm glad they're not turning her face. I'm glad they're just letting her be this unabashed bitch. It really works. It really cemented who Britt Baker is for people who are watching for the first time. Really great job. Three check marks all along. I know Alex Gray it's like some people say what a waste and what a terrible thing i'm like no that's her job is to make Britt baker look great and i thought she did just that match number four <laughs> danny limelight versus number 10 um 10 at times can look kind of awkward but not here um danny limelight is one of their premier enhancement people and um this match works it's good 10 wins with that devastating looking full nelson no problems here three check marks Match number five, Big Swole looks a little better here. Um, Big Swole, to me, is the person who 
Um, at times, sort of like the push didn't feel justified. Her ring work did not feel up to the position that she was given. It's steadily improving here, and she does bring a lot of like pizzazz and personality to the thing. Um, the match here definitely works. Um, she beats Jasmine Allure, who does a really good job here. Three check marks. No problems with this match. There's nothing particularly important to say about it, except Big Swole um, looked pretty good in it. Um, the Seidels do an interview afterwards, um, justifying our main event, which is cool. Match number six, Very Morales against Michael Nakazawa. This Michael Nakazawa as Kenny Omega's assistant thing is just fucking silly and stupid. I, I, I really hate these segments, um, but Very Morales manages to get a good match out of Michael Nakazawa, which is a funny thing to say that the enhancement talent is sort of forcing a good match here. But he is, and that dive from the top rope to the floor looked really spectacular, especially with the camera angle that they got. I do like, um, because it's weird that um, a lot of elevation here was filmed in the daytime, which just doesn't have that kind of wrestling show feel about it. But that dive looked, with the camera angle they used, made it look even higher. Um, I thought that that work was really spectacular here. Um, so three check marks. Michael Nagazawa goes over. It is what it is. Match number seven, last Lance Archer against Baron Black with Jake on commentary. This was the match that it should have been. Baron Black does his usual really great job um, playing to the person's strengths and really making them shine. And Lance Archer just beats the shit out of him. And it looks brutal. And then Jake cuts a promo after, along with Lance Archer, um, basically calling out Sting and saying why they're so obsessed with beating Sting. And I thought of that worked. Uh, match number eight, Tesha Price, who screamed a lot. Apparently, that's going to be a part of her character. It's just screaming and yelling a lot. Against Ryo Mizunami. Um, Ryo uh, cut out a lot of the stuff that tends to bog down or throw her matches off track. And so, I thought that this was one of the better girl matches, honestly. Tesha Price... Steadily improving, did a good job with her here. Three check marks. What can I say? Leg drop from the top rope and gets the pin. Um, match number nine, Max Caster against Colt Cabana. I'll call this a competitive matchup as well, actually. Um, Max Caster with the acclaimed. Um, he flubbed up his um, his little battle rap in the beginning a little bit, but that's neither here nor there. I'm a big fan of Max Caster, honestly. Um, I really think that, that it's, it's an effective person to have in AEW. I just like it. I'm glad his partner is fine and they can start teaming up again, but it's been great watching Max Caster's like solo run. Um, this match is good. And at the end, they use the boom box and cheat and roll them up. Um, the acclaimed are proficient cheaters. <laughs> um, and that's what they've clearly established. So one check mark because they both looked really good here. A second check mark because Max Caster was put over in a definitive fashion. And a third check mark because I think we have added something, um, which is that they're really, really, really good cheaters. And they have some kind of a beef with the Dark Order, which will continue, I assume. Match number 10. So we've got three check marks all night long so far. Private Party and Butcher and Blade um, uh, against Adam Priest, Ryzen, D3, Fuego del Sol. This is what it is. It's just sort of an exhibition for Private Party and Butcher and Blade. Butcher and Blade hit that finisher that I like, Drag the Lake. Though, strangely, Shivani and Big Sh and uh, Paul White did not seem to know the name of the finisher, which I found really odd. Um, Adam Priest, Ryzen, D3, Fuego do Sol, they all always do a good job, and they do a good job here. Um, there's no major flubs, no, even though there's a lot of traffic to direct. It seemed to work just fine. Three check marks. Um, we had a double or nothing video game commercial. And then we had our showcase Paul White talking to John Silver. These will get better, but this one was okay. Um, uh, I thought, especially when John Silver had to handle the question about, um, you know, uh, our man Brody Lee, um, I thought that that was the best part where John Silver, you really got to see um, 
kind of a different side of him rather than just sort of a goofball. I like that they addressed the how to, when do, where did your arms get hurt showing, showing the clip when it happened and John Silver fighting through that. Um, again, a very effective piece here. John Silver, who's getting like a really big push out of everybody in the Dark Order, it's good to sort of slow down and remind potential new fans who he is and why he's important. And I thought this was good. And again, Paul White will just get better and better at interviewing guys. So no problems with it. I thought it really worked. Match number 11, Matt Hardy against five. Uh, I like that leech submission that Matt Hardy's doing. He's kind of taken away the flashy pizzazz parts of his offense and just full heel on that leech submission. Looks great, and it's um, it's amazing, and it lets the commentators commentate. And, you know, five put up a good fight, but Matt Hardy beat him um, pretty decisively, as he should. So three check marks. Holy shit. And we're going into this last match. But before that, Hardy cuts a promo, basically lying, lining up all the people that he wants to beat, concluding with Darby Allen. I think Matt Hardy, Darby Allen is a great program for them to get into eventually. And then finally, our main event is a competitive match. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, who te teased that they were going to be a team on Dynamite. And sure enough, here they are against Matt and Mike Seidel. Really good match. The Seidels are really good at showcasing and making guys look good while getting their stuff in. Um, that tossing powerbomb thing out of the razor's edge by Ethan Page, I like it as a finisher. Maybe not for him, but I, you know what? Screw it for him. It looked great. He got the pin. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page looked good. Both teams looked good. That's a check mark. Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page won decisively. That's a second check mark and then a third check mark because you know what? They're a team to be reckoned with. So guess what? Episode four, our first three check mark night. And, um,. I like that Elevation is continuing to sort of modify things and figure things out. I love the Britt Baker match where she used it as a showcase of doing a different kind of match. Really smart stuff. Hey, what do you know? It worked. And now I shall finish watching Raw.